Oh, JD here, Tyrol Limus. And as you can see, we are back on F1 2021 here today. And this video is the final round of the F1 Esports ORL season, which I am a reserve driver for, but was kindly invited to this. And you can see the people in here, such as Danny Berezne, Alessio Di Capua, Samuel B. Dominico, El Rookie, Alvaro, who else? There's uh, quite a few fast drivers. So some current F1 eSport drivers in here, quite a few challenger drivers, people who are trying to qualify for F1 eSports. So the level of competition is incredibly high. And coming into this, I wasn't really expecting to race didn't get any opportunity to practice for this so literally just jumped into a lobby and away we go and in the previous week i've been playing quite a lot of assessor corsa so the force feedback model is incredibly different so i think it's safe to say coming into this i was particularly rusty at the game and then throwing it on top of this level of competition it's definitely going to be a tough time. But Silverstone, a track that I have always enjoyed, which is no secret. First lap we do is a 26.6, which is not particularly impressive. But we are in Q1, so the track will get faster. So with this level of competition, we are going to have to go out again, which I often don't do in other leagues, which... Not to be disrespectful to them, but when you have people who are competing in F1 Esports and qualifying for F1 Esports, these are the best drivers of the game, certainly in the top 20 on the game on all platforms, many of these. So cannot afford to be off the pace, otherwise you will be punished. And in this Q1, we ended up coming home in P10, so three temps off the pace. And let's go Di Capua. Williams Esports driver from last year, Danny Beresne, Clown Shadow driver, and then Dominico, a Ferrari Esports driver that occupies the top three in Q1. For Q2, we ended going up on Medios, but then... What is he doing, man? Yeah, kind of get a little bit blocked there. What a fucking shit place to... And yeah, a little bit frustrated of that. So we did one lap on the Mediums, and we did a 26.6 in... Or 26.3 in Q1. Come across here, it's a 26-7, so as the session went on, it's not actually a bad time for we were starting to build up the pace, but again, no way we are going to get through with that lap time, and I was very keen to start on the soft tyre, because if a safety car comes out early at Silverstone, then it's mediums to the end, and the alternate strategy usually isn't particularly powerful around here, since it's just so hard to overtake since most people are always in a DRS train and especially when people are so close on pace and this fast as you see in F1 Esports it's pretty much a DRS train vest but this is my lap that I did in the Q2 and wasn't particularly happy of it it was a very under committed lap so coming through into this corner we actually take a little lift when you want to typically take that flat out going for maggots and beckets not too bad through here but going through here we actually miss the apex slightly running out wide so not a good exit onto the hangar straight a 2.7 middle split which again isn't that impressive at this level and overall, the lap was just a very safe lap, but most likely is not going to be quick enough. Coming through into it again, just playing it very cautious, very safe. This is the only lap I'm going to do on the softs. And going across the line, it's 26.1. So an improvement from Q1. We're still currently in P10, but as the countdown comes down, we're going to see, is this going to be enough for P11? And you'll see right here now... That names are going to switch, and P11. we are in P11, which, P11. honestly, I was quite happy with, because I think even if we got through to Q3, 
our pace wouldn't have been good enough for the top six, top seven, unless we did a really good lap. So, effectively, one pole position for the alternate strategy, which at Jeddah actually worked out very well in our favour. But coming across the line, it's Dominico who puts in a 25.6, which is just nuts. I think F1 Esports pole was a 25.4, but... That is actually on a different build of the game. And speaking to a few of the F1 Esports drivers, they said that that build is a tenth or two quicker. So 25.6 is a pretty terrifying time to be doing around here. And certainly something I'd have to put a lot more hours into the qualifying if I wanted to get anywhere near close to that. But we are starting P11. You can see people behind me. The two people are starting on the softs, which is interesting. We've got five lights here and trying to get a good start. So we're in pole position for the alternate strategy. Let's see what we can do against this grid here. So coming through into here, we get pushed out wide, which means we then have to take the escape road, try to be clean and fair. And as a result of that, I've actually gained one position. Not really anything I could do there. It wasn't really given any room whatsoever and now my teammate has slotted in behind me so overall gaining one position and no damage which i think we're going to check after this right hander here so now the goal is to try and stay with the soft runners if we can stay with the soft runners then we actually have a very good opportunity to get some big big points in this race which as I said, coming into this, I wasn't feeling that confident uh, against this grid and was just feeling very, very rusty. This false feedback model is completely different to a set of Corsa where built on a set of Corsa, you can feel every single bump and you can then, you can really anticipate when the car is actually going to snap on you. Whereas in these games, the false feedback is very, in a way, disconnected and a few people might agree with me on this, but I feel like it's more about what you see visually and then deciding when the overstay happens. It kind of already happens and there's not really much you can do about it. Whereas in a set of course, you can kind of feel it coming through the feedback you're getting from the game. So now we're still in P10 and doing quite well to say, okay, it's Alessio Di Capua has spun off. So I'm not sure what happened to him there because he was looking absolutely rapid coming into this. And the objective now is just to stay in the, the DRS zone as fast as happens as 29.0 to 29.7. And we're going to be more than comfortably within the DRS detection point, which is right about here, that line that you just saw. And our pace is pretty nice at this stage of the race, which you probably heard me say a million times before, but... My race pace is always better than the qualifying pace. The gap between myself and people who are esports level definitely becomes much, much closer in race conditions. And going across the line, El Rookie up ahead of me, it's the fastest lap, but we also match it as well with a 28.9. And the medium runners behind me aren't particularly closing that massively. So the pace right now was looking extremely promising still got quite a good chunk of the ERS on board here and you just look it down the straight that's what an F1 esports race pretty much looks like where everyone is just in a single line together um, <laughs> that's why qualifying is so important in esports it pretty much is everything because it's so hard to overtake as well and everyone is so close on pace as it's like someone has pitted so I think that was one of the FES guys half pitted so now we're up into p8 in this race as we skip ahead to the end of the lap i believe a few more people go go into a rookie comes in and another couple of others and now this is extremely important that we try and get back within the drs zone because if we can leech onto the drs let's go help our case massively in this race so now we're up into p5 and Obviously, we've got four people ahead of us who have stayed out. Fastest app is a 28.7 by someone called Optic. And we didn't quite get the detection point here. 
So now we're going to use all of our ERS to try and get back within that DRS for the second zone. And we have someone called Oscar behind and Samuel Bean, who is an F1 Esports Challengers driver, who I believe he, I'm not sure if he qualified for Esports this year, but he definitely has some good points. Definitely been on the podium. I can pretty accurately say that. So he's an extremely good driver himself. Definitely someone who I feel can be in F1 Esports in the future. And we've managed to get within the DRS zone, which is really going to help us. So coming down onto this straight, using a bit of the ERS, but then deciding to turn it off early. And that's just going to help us a lot just through that section of the track. So we're coming up to lap 10 now. This is where I expect all the soft runners to be pitting. And the answer is yes. So we are going to take over the lead of this race. So you can see Dominico, FES Milan has pitted as well. And coming across the line, it's a 28.5. So we're the fastest car on track right now. And we were just, we were still right with the leaders. So right now our race pace and our track positioning this is actually looking really good for the race itself but as you come through into Samuel Bean is now behind me and if you look the guys behind the three guys behind all have a three second time penalty looks like a few people are picking up the penalties as well and this is one thing I've said about F1 eSport drivers they have to rely so much on the qualifying because grid positioning is everything Sometimes when you try and drive the same in the race, that's where you do pick up the time penalties, which is why quite often I feel that the gap is a lot closer in my race pace compared to guys such as this, because I always try and focus on being consistent as much as possible. So now we're just going to stay on board behind Samuel Bean here. So we're going to show you quite a bit of raw footage in this race. And... I felt like right now he definitely had more raw pace than me. But I think we have enough to stay within his uh, DRS zone. And I think that's the thing that's missing that I need to work on. It's just my raw speed. I'm able to keep it quite consistent. But having that extra two to three temps in qualifying and maybe an extra temp for two in the race. And when I really need it would be great. But usually I can keep it consistent and deliver a nine or eight eight or nine out of ten lap every single lap at the end of the day it's all about your average speed but that's definitely something i'm still working on it doesn't matter how long you've been playing the game or how experienced you are you can always learn from things and improve in many different ways and you can see here we're doing quite a nice job at staying within his drs zone i don't think we i think we might have only one warning in this race so far so the race management has been pretty good. You can see really closing up. And just using the DRS zone to really try and save it. So do a bit of a dummy to the pits, which he doesn't fall for. But his teammate does pit. Because the pit window is coming up. And the goal was to try and go as deep as possible into this race. Because even when we go on the softs, it is going to be still quite difficult to overtake people when they are stuck in that DRS train. But the pace right now was looking very, very nice. And you see Danny Barresa 22.7 seconds behind. The pit delta is around 28 and a half seconds. So he's going to be about six seconds ahead of us. Ten laps to go. That isn't impossible to close in on. As we almost run into the back of Samuel Bean there. So timing that pit entry almost to perfection. And... We are well within a chance to get big, big points in this race. Usually, the soft runners would be much further behind than this. But using Samuel Bean and just, I feel, our pace in general has been extremely good in this race. So now we're going to put on brand new soft tyres, which is also an advantage. We haven't had to use all our softs because we didn't get through into the Q3. So now we have brand new soft tyres, the freshest tyres out of everyone and on the fastest compound. So it's going to be the case now of following Samuel Bean through the field. He has a time penalty, so effectively I don't really need to race him that particularly hard here. And we've come out behind his teammate, 
but he is in the DRS side of his teammate. So you can see coming through here, we just turn off the ERS nice and early and save it for when we are really going to need it. So skipping on to start off the next lap. Samuel's teammate up ahead doesn't have DRS on the cars ahead of him. So my thinking here now was to try and overtake Oscar when Samuel does at the same time. So that was the thought process going through my head. So I was really hoping that Oscar wouldn't get any DRS detection point off the cars up ahead. You can see we still got quite a lot of ERS on board and comfortably staying with his back, setting a purple first sector as a result of that. And yeah, we were feeling, you can see that the lead leaders are only just up the road as well. And quite a few of them have time penalties as well, which I said before, qualifying you've got to give it 100% everything in the race sometimes you have to manage it a bit more which is why often drivers get a lot of penalties during the race itself but then someone has gone out of the race and what is this is it going to be a full safety car yes it is the full blown safety car and honestly this was not a bad thing at all because the leaders can't really afford to pit because we're so close to them and we're on relatively fresh tyres ourselves they wouldn't They'd just be losing so much track position so now the field has actually bunched up again a couple people have pitted for fresh softs who are further behind me so not the two guys behind and now we are right in the pack with the leaders with almost the freshest tires on track and with no penalties at all so all of a sudden this is really, really swinging into our favour. So you can see here, once again, we're not attacking here for now because we are going to have opportunities coming towards the end of the race as the Ferraris go side by side. Samuel Bean tries to go down the inside of him as well. And with the softs, he should be getting that slightly better traction. Using the ear assist to defend from the car behind, but then turning it off nice and early. Samuel should be having a lot more grip coming through into here. Someone else is going out wide and all of a sudden it started to be a little bit clustered together. And someone has a big snap of oversteer, which then results in me slowing down. And now I'm side by side with Mercedes, which is something I really did not want to do. So trying to use the slipstream of Jesse L. Rookie. And what is going on here? A little bit of wheel bang going into cops. And we have to go around the outside of this Mercedes. Trying to use the slipstream from the Ferrari up ahead. Cannot afford to be losing this position. So we're going to try everything to stay ahead. And just about leaving enough room. Living to fight another day. And yeah, we needed to stay ahead there. Otherwise, we would have just been swallowed up by the pack up behind us. And I really wanted to try and stay with uh, Samuel Bean as well. Because I know he's going to have electric pace. And we don't even need to stay ahead of him on track. So we did everything we needed to do up into PA and still four laps of this race to go. Leaders still right here with time penalties up ahead. We should be making good, good progress now. So DRS has not been enabled yet, but you can see the grip we have on these softs are really closing in. Coming through into here, trying to get a good exit, but on this exit, yeah, you're about to see. Fucking hell, man. What the fuck? <sighs> and yeah, you're about to hear a little bit of frustration right now. Fuck's sake. And yeah. Echoing that, what I just said there. Why am I making so many fucking mistakes at the moment? And yeah, I can't really explain that. Fuck, it was man. just simply just a mistake. Normally, I never run that wide in that corner. But this time we did, and we have paid the price for it. And yeah, I was gutted. Absolutely gutted at that because I felt like we were in such a good position to get some big, big points. And we drove really well during the race, showing some great pace. But yeah, a moment's lapse of concentration, and that's how quickly things can turn. And. Yeah, not even going to make it an excuse for that. No, it's a course, so it's a definite force feedback model, but an F1, if you touch the grass sometimes, it will just auto-spin you straight away. And yeah, maybe a little bit of rustiness involved there, but 
yeah, it's just a mistake. Um, and yeah, and people make them. And you just got to try and learn from them and uh, take it as a lesson. And yeah, right here on the Star app, we're having a bit of fun now, racing with Alessio De Capua, who is a Williams F1 esports driver. Used to play an Xbox. Used to be called Kowalski on Xbox, and honestly, he was one of the fastest drivers I have ever come across playing an F1 game. His raw pace is insane. And last year, he had a bit of a struggle in F1 esports, despite the incredible pace. But if you don't execute your perfect lap, you will be punished. So even people at this level shows how incredibly hard it is. Um, but we're gonna have a bit of fun with him here. We're trying to few little tactic games between us he's doing a bit of a weaving and dodging and uh, we got that inside here so nothing really to lose here now make a little bit of contact so he goes completely out wide Danny Bresne wins the race going through into 5k he really doesn't leave me much room at all so we're going to try and maybe return the favor just a little bit getting an illegal overtake okay, you need to get that in the process and yeah <laughs> little bit of fun there but honestly I was yeah, I was gutted with that result. As uh, so we're going to stay on board with Alessio. So this is what it was from uh, his perspective. Make sure you give him a follow. Streams on Twitch, all of his races. And <laughs> go listen in to what he says here. No. <laughs> uh. Mamma mia. <laughs> and yeah after well both of us having a very disappointing result it's good that you can sometimes laugh about it and um realize there are more important things in life but for me i've always absolutely loved racing always love to continue to challenge myself and against people such as this you know, Dario in second as well is also Alpha Tori sports driver from last year yeah, going against harder competition uh, usually makes me a better driver overall so I really hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for the support on the channel as well make sure you check out Coach Limitless for one to one coaching with myself if you are interested in that join the clicking the join button to join my youtube membership getting access to my serps and my discord thank you so much catch you soon peace